Hey, welcome back, fam, to another episode of The Green Room. The Green Room. Well, actually, this is I guess this is another episode of The B-Sides, which is in The Green Room. Correct. Because this is us warming up. So we're, what you're calling it, The B-Sides. Well, yeah, because we had, because technically the first set we called, you know, just in The Green Room, because that's what it is. We're, we're in the back room, not in the actual, like, recording studio to go do what I'm telling you. So it's like that separation. This is like how we warm up and... It's just, yeah, our whole setup process. Yeah, where I have to like tell you to like put the mic in your mouth and all that kind of good stuff. Just sound check stuff. Yeah, it's no, they get it. They get it. Yeah, Dude, put it in your mouth. Yeah, it's it's funny. I don't know, <laughs> but it's not them that I'm trying to make sure that they're. They, I don't need them in the mic. I need you in the mic. I'm on the mic. You're not on the mic. I'm. I'm on the mic. Yeah, see, see, can you hear the difference? Yeah, you got to like. You have to be like you know in it in it right up in it. it. Okay. There you go. Oh, there it is. Welcome to the party, pal. Party, pal? Pin, pal? What's a party, pal? Sounds like something you take with you to a party. PayPal. What is a party, pal? It's like a 30-pack like 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 with ice. Like a, like a specialized flask that fits oh, in a special hidden me. pocket in your jacket. It's oh, a party, pal. By the way, we never fully introduced. We just did the show. Um, yeah, if we want to, you know. If you want to reach out oh, to us. Oh, yeah, if you want to reach out to us at... Um, I'm telling you at directionsandmusic.org. That's I M T E L L I N Y O U at directionsandmusic.org. Yeah, and um, I'm one of your hosts from I'm telling you, even though we're you know we're in the green room on the B sides. This is Philly D and Mr. Gemini. Yeah, this is uh, so. Yeah, if you're a first time listener on this, yeah, we're just you know this is how we warm up. We're a 30 year friendship, uh, just chopping it up, talking about crazy stuff. This is how we um, this is how we get warmed up to try to be actually serious ish. Do we do that? I don't. Do we get serious? Right. That's why I had somebody to has that. to review this and let me know. Is there any serious, really serious, serious stuff in there? It seems like we have moments, you know, of spurts of seriousness and. Interlaced. That's why yeah. I put the uh, the hyphen ish on ish. the end. Yeah, there's there's an ish about it. That gives you an out ish. Yeah, it's ish, which is you know what we also do. We're just a bunch of ish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. So this is uh, us. How we warm up. Uh, we kind of relax, chill. Um, maybe have a drink or two. You know, loosen up, get ourselves ready. Which you know, I'm actually surprised you don't. Uh, you didn't bring a beer with you. No, I'm gonna save that for. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, yeah, because you're being smart. I like that, yeah. On two wheels, buddy. Yeah, right. no, it's, uh, I just recalled that. Yeah, keep it light. Yeah, for, man. You know, one for the real show. Save one for the real show. Oh, what if, what if only people like listen to this and they think this is the real show? Well, then click on the other ones. They're all there. It's like when you make fun of Canada. It's just not nice, man. I'm not going to do that. Not anymore. <laughs> not even enough. I know we uh, we just found out that we have people listen to us in uh, Canada, France, uh, Bolivia now, and like uh, a whole bunch of places. The Ukraine, like, dude, it's crazy. I might have to start reading up on different things now and see. Maybe mm-hmm. I can learn some stuff about other cultures. Yeah, you know, we're gonna have to start using like alternate ways to cheers and whatnot, right? Yeah, I'm all about that. I'm gonna start looking stuff up now. Well, not now, now. It's obviously now. Now we're doing this. Well, but see, that's the thing. Well, but see, that's the thing. <laughs> I want to be specific, right? Well, but yeah, I mean, this is the green room, right? So we're we're doing a B sides. It's the it's the whatever we want it to be. If we're gonna be, you know, taking the time to to do research, or is I think now is the time. So as opposed to doing it in the actual show, yeah, the real show. I said it too. The, the real show. Yeah. yeah. There's no offense. I mean, you could just reach over and click on the um telling you shows. They're all posted up there. Yeah, that's when we, uh, you know, stop being polite and start getting real. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch some? Since? No, no, I just finally remembered it like uh, right now. I was like, I'm going to interject this. <laughs> My brain did something. Yay. It wasn't as complicated a quote as you thought it was, huh? No, not really. <laughs> no, I, I just completely like just destroyed it. It was a horrible <clears throat> thing. I'm I'm a bad, bad person. I'm okay with it though. I made I made peace <clears throat> with it. So just uh I don't know. Just on my mind lately. We've talked about him before, but um this month, Robin Williams would have been 70. And it's just something to think about because, I mean, 70's really not that old. And he could still not be now. making awesome movies. Oh, yeah. 
It's uh, yeah, 70s, the new 40. That's what I hear. Everybody take a moment of silence for Robin Williams. Just, you know. So anyway, this all came off this. this I love song. how you just asked for a moment of silence and then just kept going. Yeah, I have no moment of silence. See, I would have been like, here, moment of silence. Go ahead, press pause. Take your moment of silence. And welcome back. Okay, sorry. See, there you go. So now they put the pause in as long as they need. <laughs> and we can continue. You just, you know, you got to give, got to give direction. So um, all of this came off of a, like, I, I wasn't even thinking about his actual birthday and when it rolled around again, but um, it all came from a vlog that's done by Hunter Adams or Patch Adams, the actual Patch Adams. Um, so he, he took a moment, like a couple minutes just to say something about him with his upcoming birthday. You know, obviously now that he's gone and just, uh, yeah, I ended up posting it on, on my Ken Gemini Facebook page. So you really just took this to a whole nother like place. I, what did I, there's like a different energy in the room and everything. Is it weird? Well, just a moment of silence for, for Robin. We already did amazing, that. amazing guy. But anyway, we're, we, we, we're now past that. With the whole Patch Adams thing, it was it was a life changing role, man. It was a great it movie was, too. It was an amazing movie. I mean, not I've liked all of his movies, but um, the depiction of Patch Adams, the and the guy himself is quite a character. You're and quite think, a character. I think he played him well because I saw old footage of him as well. So, yeah, from what I understand, I mean the the different like background of the real individual as I've seen it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he. I, I think the only person to be able to do that role correctly would have been Robin Williams, like in all honesty. Yeah, because he, he does the clown very well. Yeah. And and Patch is very much a clown. Like, he, he, in his heart, he's a total clown. I mean, I feel I mean, like we are. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> very right? super intelligent, but a clown. Well, and I think... I mean, at least for me, at the court jester, I I typically try to do very much that levity. You know, I try to add that that funny to everything because you know what, life is already serious enough. We don't need to make it more serious. You know, it's okay. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good way to put it. When I'm thinking about like why it is that we mix it up when we talk serious, that it just kind of happens naturally. I think in our conversation because you need to, like you said, you need to get the ups and the downs and. But you know the the serious stuff is important. But yeah, I changed the whole mood in the room. <laughs> well, and that's and that's why I like the idea that we do <clears throat> this. We do have this seriousness because you know we obviously speak in a very intelligent manner when we do get into these very I don't want to say difficult, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Sometimes, well, some of them are, but I mean in in general. The, the conversations we have are of at least, and when you use the word serious, it makes it sound like there's so much urgency behind it. And it's not so much that there's that. It's the fact that these are just conversations that really kind of open up for other conversations, which I think is really the bigger thing is because then it, it promotes the, the, the talk. Like, let's just talk, period. I don't, I don't care what it is. So we take... We take the responsibility. How about that? We take the responsibility of making sure that we're having these honest, heartfelt conversations in a respectful manner, but also keeping it light and grounded so that, you know, it's it's not always just like serious. It's also like, all right, cool, that's pretty funny. I like it. So I mean that's that's my my belief. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to interject too that like we we're still reaching out for more of an interactive show. Right. I mean, we're we're looking for not only feedback, but, you know, actual raw material from from you guys out there listening. So whether it's whether it's on this show or whether it's on the real show. Well, I said it before. I would really like for us to be able to have a guest that comes on and does that with us for I'm telling you and would also join us in the green room to, to you know, to warm up. I think I mean, I I. I was, when we first started doing this, and you came at me, you're like, you know what? I really feel like there's all this other stuff that we could be recording. And I thought it was almost like gimmicky. And then we started doing it, and I was just like, you know what, dude? This is a really good idea. Because when we started doing... 
Well, we can talk about our sound checks. We can talk about you know dates and times and times of year and weather and all kinds of stuff that you know we kind of restrict ourselves in, in the other format. So, well, and that's only been recent. So, I mean, like originally, because when we we did the very first episode where we both felt really good, you know, felt really strong about how well it went, you know, audio quality, the whole deal. You came at me and was just like, "Hey, that's a really good episode." I feel like. And I was almost like, dude, you're crazy. Like, I'm not going to do this. But then I was like, you know what? I talked him into this. Why not? Let's try it. Let's see what happens. And then after a couple episodes, I was like, you know what? This is a good idea. It's a thing. It's a thing. Well, because even in our first series, we weren't, we weren't doing the radio show yet. So we weren't constrained to being timeless. Right. We didn't, like you were saying, you know, we can be more specific. We can talk about dates and times and places. And we're a little bit, we're a little bit freer in this. So not having that before to this degree, because we weren't doing the radio show, but we still had that, you know, that freedom because it was that non serious side. Cause it's like, yeah, I do. This is literally us just like you were almost like we should be doing it as if we're, you know, setting up the equipment and then recording ourselves as we're setting up the I was equipment. even saying some of our <clears throat> phone conversations. Like when we know, like we have to get together and chat on the phone for like, it's supposed to be like four minutes and it ends up being like, you know, 28 or an hour. Or, there's, but, there's been plenty of times where I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to call him real quick. And then an hour later, I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm where I'm at. I gotta, I gotta get out of the car. I, gotta, I, gotta I think go. sometimes due to just whatever's going on and the, the time of day, the fact that you're out in the sunshine, like we just kind of goof it up just normally in our conversation. And like a couple of times I was like, dude, man, this is genius stuff. We missed it all. <laughs> well, and that's, I think that's one of the great things about what we do and how we do it is because we, we have this give and take, like we have this giving and receiving, not only of knowledge exchanging, but also energy of happiness and joy you know this this is just what we do so whether we're on the phone whether we're on the mics with you know we're like hanging out in a garage or at a bar like do we're just going to talk like this you know it's just the fact of like in these moments we actually have mics on and then we're recording it yeah yeah we're uh, we're weird like that we thought our conversations were so awesome we wanted everyone else to hear them and people like it well, it was mostly you that thought that. Okay. No, no, I mean, just okay. to be, because you're the founder here. You're the. The founder. Yeah, you're the founder. It was, yeah. Four score and <laughs> two series ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, I I kept. You were the founder, but I wrote the manifest. <laughs> you're right. It's a joint effort here. Yeah, well, and that was the thing is like originally we would always be goofing around like, cause I mean, we would have these serious conversations, you know, very philosophical and, you know, we would get into the, like the psychology of stuff. Like we would actually talk in a deep manner, but most of the time we were just cracking like crazy jokes, like dad jokes and just like making puns and stuff. So even though we were having these extremely deep conversations, they were still like mad hilarious. And I was like, yo, we need to record this so that we can actually write this stuff down and turn it into like sketch comedy as a duo. You know, I was trying to talk you into like recording this for like, like our snowballing aspect, you know, sitting around doing readings or whatever and like, you know, spitball and stuff. I mean, I don't know. I, I could, I could see this becoming something, you know, morphing into something else or having a branch off from it, but. What well, it already did. I mean, we, that's what this is. This is the branch off. In a way, but in a way it's kind of like the prequel. Kind of. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, because we did our first, well, and so our first episode wasn't even our first episode. This was, that was probably like episode seven or eight of oh, all after the trials. All the, all the failures. I wouldn't call them failures because they brought us to that place. You know, <laughs> they were happy little accidents. We learned, we figured out. But yeah, I mean, because we did, we had one where we were like in my kitchen with like no sound equipment. It was horrible with these like cheesy lapel mics. It picked up everything in the room. It was mad reverb. It was like almost tinny. Oh, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. The conversation was phenomenal. But yeah, you can you can't recreate that unfortunately. You just Yeah, I think our real first it's and that's the thing is our real first attempt at the idea of what I'm telling you was supposed to be and basically is we did I, I gave us a prompt basically where it was like you write down three things. It could be a question statement, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It could be like, you know, unicorns are awesome. Like, I don't care. Yeah. 
you know, like I think Venezuela should become a socialist country. Like, dude, it doesn't matter what the uh, the statement is. But you say your three things, I say my three things, and then from those statements, it just kind of sparks a conversation. Which I mean, it worked out really well. I mean, we actually videoed that too. So, like you know, maybe, doing the doing the kernel, yeah, the, the, the kernel of thought, and whatever yeah. it is, it could be a statement or be just a connection of words, a, a certain name for a top secret government project. Who knows? You know, yeah. something that would get. Like, oh man, I heard about that, and the next thing you know, you're it's ten minutes later. Yeah, no, it's that, uh, and that's and, and that's one thing, and you got. Three I also, yeah. I also think it's pretty ironic because we we videoed that. That was an actual segment, which we I still have <laughs> at, at at this point right now. Like the now, now as we're recording, that has never been viewed by anyone but you and I. It's probably going to stay that way. Well, and that's what. So that's why. I, that's what the uh, the irony I think of all of it is because at this point we're starting to talk about running video for. I'm telling you because of the way the format actually is. Whereas the green room, that's never going to happen, man. This is Vegas in here. What happens in the green room stays in the green room. <laughs> you know, we put some of this on audio. You're lucky for to get you. a mic. That's your. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're you're looking behind the curtain right now. You, you you're seeing the the Wizard of Oz right Pay now. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, but. That's what we're doing. But there's no actual curtain. There is an imagination threshold. Maybe like a sheet with a mattress or something like that. Well, I mean, technically, that's what we have. That's, yeah. yeah. It's a curtain. That's the... Yeah. Right. Left. So, how are things going with you? Uh, great, Mom. How are you? Doing lots of golf. Or not enough, you said. No, I said I need to practice more. You need to practice more. Yeah, play less, practice more. I'm at a place where, yeah, I've been playing too much and not practicing, and then I'm I'm getting away from my my rhythms and tempos and yeah, the appropriate swings and just you know really driving it home. Pun intended. Did you have to practice all like that on a regular when you did billiards or? Oh yeah, same thing. Like even between games, like you'd have to get there and at least have 20 minutes to practice and warm up or. Well, so that's the thing is when you play, you play. So when you practice, there's no take backs. There's no. Right. So when you practice, it's not just like, you know, hey, I'm going to practice playing. I'm going to practice this specific shot. Mm. You know, so pool, golf, all that stuff. I'm literally going to practice this exact shot and you do it over and over and over and over again. The side pocket, corner pocket in one shot. Yeah, whether do you, one. yeah, whether you're practicing caroms, you know, whether you're practicing with your wedges, like it doesn't matter. Every single one of those is a very specific stroke, very specific shot, very specific intention, and you have to practice that to build your confidence in how to do it. I remember for a while I was going, I was going to a place I wasn't like a bar that I wasn't familiar with, but I I'd end up going on league night, and I didn't even know it. But like this, this guy kept calling me over. He was like, you know, come on over and shoot a game with me. Help me warm up. You know, and I looked down and like when they run league, you know, they just open the, the bottom of the table up so you can just reach in and like, you know, have to do the whole quarters thing. I was like, awesome. I get to play on your league time. And the guy would play with me and he was like, he was like, you know, I'd prefer you do it on every shot, but definitely like if we were playing, whether it was eight ball or nine ball, he's like, you have to carry him. The final shot, you have to. So whether you're you're running the cue ball off a off a bank or banking the actual target ball, he's like, you can't run it straight in the hole. So that was his whole challenge to me. So we run a lot of our shots like that. I was like, see how many shots you can make off a off a carom. Yeah, that was. Um, we'd also play like last pocket. That was some other stuff too. Oh, whatever pocket I make, like playing horse. No, no, no. So uh, last pocket, uh, whether eight ball, nine ball, whatever, whatever the last pocket, you drop the last ball in before the final ball, you know, the eight or the nine to finish out the actual rack, mm-hmm. you would have to put that ball in that pocket as well. And if you missed it, you still have to, if you know, if your other opponent goes, if your opponent goes and they miss, then you still have to put it back into that same pocket. <laughs> Which in some cases might mean bouncing it all the way around the world. Well, but it gives a, a strategy aspect because now you're, you know, whoever you're playing, you can be a little bit more defensive. So it's like, hey, my, you know, I have to put this one in the top left. He's on the bottom right. 
if I miss this, I want to make sure I'm leaving it at a place where it's like, you know, for him to have to, you know, to bank it or for her, you know, for her to have to, you know, whoever it's, it just, it adds that little extra. Right. So not only is it more difficult for you as a shooter, just because you have to be able to do that, but it also gives your opponent that opportunity to play defense. If there's only a ball left on the table. I don't even know if I, I don't even know if I ever learned the guy's name. It was one of those things. Like I would started doing this on a regular, I knew what his league night was and I would come out and I'd have a drink and he'd call me over and we'd play a game to help him warm up, like, or in between rounds, whatever it was. And, uh, that was always his thing. And it, it was just, that's neat. When you find somebody like that, they just, they play for the love of the game. You know, I mean, he was there because it was league night. It was an excuse to get out of the house, but you know, he truly just enjoyed the love of the game. Like it wasn't really all about winning and losing. And it wasn't about, you know, like you with golf in a way, like how that's come out of, you know, as a new love for you, newer, newish. Yeah, it's uh um, But it's yeah, it's not always the score, the end result that you're concerned with. That it's you know, did I enjoy myself? Did I make progress or at least, you know, maintain or whatever. That I would very much uh <clears throat> the fact that I had just stated I need to practice more and not play as much. Today's score Taught me that. Right. So I played horribly today. I really did. It was disgusting on so many levels. I mean, I almost started getting upset. And it's just like, you know what? I got to breathe, walk away, recenter myself, be in the present, gain my confidence back. But you were also telling me before, like sometimes the score means nothing because whether it's up or down from your usual, it's still like, you know, you could maybe have done really well on some holes you usually have trouble with. But then just flub the stuff you're used to, which you know, I guess it's possible. But oh, absolutely, because it's a lack of focus and confidence. You're just like, oh, I'm just gonna, and you're like, no, that's not how that works. You can't just be like, mm -hmm, no, no. You, you still have to focus. You still have to have intention. You still have to be very specific in what you're doing. And yeah, so I mean, there's times where I've had really great scores, you know, where I've shot like ten or twelve over. And the reason that that happened is I just, I got some lucky rolls. So whether it was lucky rolls getting to the green or for some reason, you know, the way I was putting, it just like, I shouldn't have been on, but yet somehow it was still making it because, you know, the, the grass was, you know, harder or softer or, you know, so the ball rolled quicker or slower, or, you know, so there was these outside factors that basically allowed me to have that great score. So it's like, dude, even there's days where I definitely have greater focus and intent, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to get the physical outcome. Mentally, I was there, you know, mentally I had everything in it and I felt great and had the confidence. So the score wasn't great, but there was plenty of opportunities where I was playing well and feeling really great about what I was doing, you know? So yeah, the score doesn't always, to me, the score is not always the indicator, but it is a indicator. It's crazy, though, all the things that you have to keep in mind. You know, like, and as you're, you're telling me all this, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, you know, if it's early, early in the morning and the grass is still wet, it's going to react different than if it's later in the afternoon and it's been baking in the sun all day. You know, so does that speed up the, the yeah. ball as it comes down? And that if you, all those tiny little changes you have to make in your mind, like, okay, well, the ground's going to be wet, so I can really whack it and give it forward spin because it's not going to, you know, it's not going to have the same kind of oomph that it normally would hitting all that wet grass or whatever. Well, yeah, and you know, and like all these little calculus problems that you're working out in your head, you don't even think about. Like your body just does it. And the, dude, my coach and I were actually just talking about this. He made the analogy. Um, because he's been having me work on shot shaping. And shot shaping is when you're starting to try to play golf, period, is very difficult because you don't quite have the understanding of the tools and your body hasn't you know, built the confidence around it. 
and he was trying to have me do you know specific things and i was starting to get frustrated not like upset but just like oh you know i'm, I'm trying and i'm trying and it's just not working yet he uh he pulls me aside takes a break and he he hands me a hammer oh yeah and dude, he's just like here hold this i'm like all right cool you know holding a hammer and in the stall that we were, you know, my practice stall that we were at, there's a uh, post there and it had a nail sticking out of it, but it wasn't straight out. It was actually half in and bent down. Mm-hmm. So it was almost like a, you know, an upside down hook. And he just hands me the hammer and he says, see that nail? He's like, I just want you to go tap it on the head. He's like, I don't want you to drive the nail. You don't need to pound it. He's like, I just want you to go over and just bing, just, just tap the head. I'm like, all right, cool. So he hand, you know, hands me the hammer. I walk over. I position myself correctly, and I just ding, just a little tap. And then, you know, I walk back over and I hand him the hammer. I'm just like, there you go. I tap the nail. All right, great. He goes, why did you do that? I'm like, what do you mean? Because you told me to. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> why did I do how I did it? Oh, like, like yeah, you know, the angle that you attacked it from, and the so yeah. I didn't think about it. I literally walked over to it. I positioned myself correctly so that I could just take the hammer. Remember, because the nail's pointing down, mm-hmm. and it's probably like maybe two, two and a half feet off the ground. So I got to crouch almost. I instinctively walk over, crouch, position myself so that the hammer head is pointing up, and it's just behind the nail. And I literally just raise my hand and just go dink. I mean, I barely touch the thing. And I walk back over. Here's the hammer. He's like, you didn't think about it. Right, you just did it. You automatically position yourself. He's like, your brain already makes all of the calculations. It's already aware of all of this stuff. He's like, you have the confidence of using that tool correctly that when I told you to do this, you just went and did it. I was like, okay, I see what you, yeah, I see what you did there. Okay, mm-hmm. So a golf club is a tool. It's almost like some Miyagi shit. Is it going to like wax the floor later on? Like, oh, dude, no, it totally <laughs> was. It was like that um, the scene I talk about in um, The Matrix where they're sitting there down there talking and he tells them a story and he's like, yeah, so what's the point? He's like, there's no point. You know, old men like me don't make points. We tell stories, right? <laughs> that's right. So that's what he's saying. spin a yarn. <laughs> yeah, so it's just they give very, very minimal direction or just it's like enough where it's like, yo, your brain should figure this out for you. So yeah, he did that and gave me the analogy of it and I was just like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see what you did there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but... Well, but, and but, all buts, hey boss, big butts. <laughs> <laughs> Having that kind of an understanding now where my clubs are a tool. And I just, You're a tool. Sometimes I am. <laughs> I just need to have that very conscious practice of using that tool again and again. Because that's the thing. I mean, how many, how many nails have I hammered in my life? Crap ton. You know, I've been playing with a hammer since I was like six or seven. You like, were playing with a hammer? Was that like your first toy? Pretty much, yeah. My my, my dad was just <laughs> like, here's a hammer. Let's uh, you know, show you how to use it. And I was like six or seven, and I was already starting to play with like wood and nails and stuff. And he was teaching me how to do carpentry. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's walking around the house doing stuff, and he, you know, I'm like, hey, All class. Around, like, yeah. What are you, what's yeah. going on? What are we doing? So. Hey, come over here. But that's that thing is, yeah, I've just, I've used that tool so many times, I'm fully aware of how to use it without even thinking about it. So once I can get myself to that level of experience and confidence with my golf clubs, same thing. You know, so he's just trying to pretty much get into my head of like, yeah, you calm yourself. You've only been at this for two years. There's no need to get upset. You're trying stuff that, that people that have been playing for 15, 20 years still can't do. And I'm at it for like two and I'm, Almost pulling it off already. It's like he's just telling you, like, believe in yourself. You know, he pretty much he, dude, calm yourself, Junior. There's, there's no. Like, it'll come. Yeah, give it a couple of years, but you're aware of what it is. But how I like to do that, it. That whole idea, and I'd like, I'm a big proponent of that in all kinds of things, especially with health. Like, the body knows what it's doing. Like, the best thing you can do is get out of its way. Oh, that's exactly it. Yeah, the. Um, my coach always asks me, he's like, is golf easy? Yeah, golf is easy. We make it hard. Right, yeah. Because now we're starting to think about it. Don't think about it. Just go do it. See what you want. Tell your body that's what you want and do it. It is that easy. Yeah, it really is. Because there's, there's certain times where 
I'll be playing around and I'm just starting because again, I'm only playing for two years. So I get out of rhythm because I'm not confident. I'm not experienced enough, but I get out of sorts and I start to like get agitated, not like upset, but just like getting worked up. And so instead of, well, well then you flub the basics. Like, well, but so here's the thing is, so <clears throat> typically if you, people who watch golfers, like the professionals, there's a routine. When they step up to the ball, they, you know, everyone's a little different, but they basically, you know, address the ball, address the lie, you know, position themselves, get an idea of what the yardage is. They pick their club. They, you know, they go through all of these different things. So you look down at the ball and you're like, hi. Well, I'll, I'll get to a point of frustration where I basically circumvent doing that routine. And, you know, uh, Dr. E.T. calls it, I step out of the pocket. Okay, yeah. Which there are plenty of times in doing that and just saying, screw this, I'm not going to do a practice swing. I'm not going to sit here and address the ball. I'm just going to walk up going, I know I need 120 with a roll. I'm grabbing this club and just slam the crap out of it. Sometimes that works. Play like you're playing a speed round or something? No, I just, I skip the routine. So I go straight to my mind saying, this is what we're going to do. And the body just goes, you got it, boss. And it does it. Which is frustrating because then it's like, well, if I can do that, then why do I need to have this routine? Why do I waste all the time doing, yeah. When in actuality, like staying inside. Addressing the ball, approaching it, you know, centering yourself, practicing your swing, all these. And you just skip right over that. Like you step up, look at it real quick and just. Yeah. And that, you know, that's, that's it. like Dr. E.T. would call that stepping into the pocket. So I, I need to realize that I have to step into the pocket. Because that's a, a, he's like he made the analogy of a good quarterback. You know he the there's plenty of quarterbacks. Well, not plenty. There's there's definitely several quarterbacks that can not only just throw the ball, but they can also run with the ball. And he's like, dude, the quarterbacks, like the really good ones that can't run, they're even better. And he's like, this is why, because they don't have that other option. They have to stick to the routine. They have to take you know. They got to mitigate risk like there and then, and they have to rely on sitting still, taking an extra two steps or two seconds, finding that breathing room in that pocket, as opposed to like trying to run back and forth and get crazy about stuff. Do stick to your routine, get into your pocket, trust the process, don't rush the process, and just do it. Hmm. That's very sad. Well, it's even to the point where when I go to the driving range to practice, I also practice my routine. You know, when I'm chipping or putting in my house, like because I have like small little practice set up, same thing. I have my routine and I'm really starting to trust that. So when I have days like today, which was like an absolutely horrible score, it basically tells me it's like, yeah, you haven't been practicing enough. Calm yourself, relax, enjoy it, practice more. If this is what you want to do, you have to put the time and effort in. And especially like you said, since you haven't been playing for 10, 15 years solid. So, you know, when you when you get to that point, you're still gonna have to practice, but a lot of it's gonna come more naturally, I think. That it's it's already ingrained in your muscle memory kind of thing. Well, so as my coach would say, there's no such thing as muscle memory. Mm-hmm. It's only confidence. Y- yeah. Your body, because we were talking about your body already knows how to do it. It calculates at such a ridiculous rate. It it takes in all this information and runs through it and figures stuff out. So there there is no muscle memory in that aspect. It's just confidence of your ability to show your mind what you want so that your mind shows the body and goes, do this. Yeah, but it's never just do this. It's like do this, but tweak this, tweak that, tweak this. Then do this. Well, and that's the thing. And that's what I was saying. That's impressive is that you can make all those adjustments in your mind and set send that back, basically to the body to the or whatever animal brain Mm. to figure that out. And it's just like you know, like all these things perfectly lining up for you to be able to have the balance, the strength, you know, the power necessary to to drive the thing, however many yards you need it. And my, I would correlate. I would make an analogy of in a in a car's computer, it takes all this information in. 
you know, it knows how much air, what the temperature of air is, what the density of it is, what the pressure is, all these different factors. And every time one of those little things changes, the computer then goes to a different fuel and uh, ignition curve. A different mapping. Yeah, yeah curve mapping, same thing. So right. it automatically puts itself into a different you know, program or alternate thinking. Well, you, with your body and your, your experience and your confidence, as you step up to the wall, you address, yeah, okay, so this is where it's at. This is how it is. This is where it goes. So all those things. Your brain just starts putting you into that place where you see what you want it to be. Your body takes care of the rest. And like automatically, like, you know, the shoulder will drop a little bit. The arm will turn out, you know, whatever it needs, whatever to be. adjustments you need to make. It's like it, it's like your body already knows what it's doing. Well, your body does know what it's doing. And all you're telling it is, I want to see the ball go from here to there in this fashion. Right. And your body should just go, you got it, boss. Yeah. Confidence. It's a beautiful thing, man. It, it's just, uh, me at this point in my life, having done, you know, restaurants, uh, automotive businesses, I've done consulting, like I've done HR stuff, like dude, I've done so many freaking things. Golf has tied all of these like lessons together in, in a very weird sense that it, to me, it just became very apparent that this is my Zen. It, it forces me to focus, relax, stay calm, stay in the present, be aware, you know, have, um, I mean, all that just, it's meditation, meditation, meditate. It's all the same stuff you're, t- you're saying basically like the super focused, but super relaxed at the same time, which normally would sound like an oxymoron or you're an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> What what is what the, what is this? I ain't no oxymoron. <laughs> That's oxymoron. What's 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 an oxymoron? It's like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> Government intelligence. Yeah, there's a good one. Yeah, that's uh, Danny DeVito, Renaissance man. Yeah, yeah, and uh, what's his name? Uh, two times, Mister Rago. That was a good man. I, mean, I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, I think that was Dwayne Wayne in that, right? Was it? Yeah, from a different world. Don't look it up, though. Isn't that not. what it was? The uh, the offshoot from the Cosby Show was. No, it? I remember. Yeah, I remember that show. World, yeah. What? Um, he had the double flip glasses. That's what. Yeah, that was the thing. For, for a short time, there were actually people that thought that was cool, and it was all because of that show. I mean, wait, they're not. I no. I thought totally. those things were dope as shit. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dude, you get freaking, you get your actual. Maybe like, they would be now. I don't know. You get your actual glasses and you're like, oh, it's a little bright. You just like flip down. You're just like, well, technically now you just have the the, the glasses, the the glass in them actually just changes. They have like dyes that uh, react to the UV. So as it gets brighter, they get darker. Wait, what was the name of the show again? It was Different World, wasn't it? A Different World. Yeah. A Different World. And that was yeah. from. It was the offshoot from the Cosby show. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I, f- I forget what college it was, but yeah, that was um, yeah, that was the uh, the Cosby Show offshoot. I don't know why, but I just started thinking about what's happening. Remember what's happening? <laughs> what's happening and what's happening now? Yep. Yeah, remember that? Freaking, it's, it's going way back. Now I'm gonna want to start watching. Wasn't that wasn't that Raj and rerun? Raj and rerun. Yep. Yeah, man, that's good shit. That was probably one of the first shows I actually watched on the color TV. On the on the color on that dare color TV. I do. I used to watch. So here's my thing. Growing up in the neighborhood, I did. I watched all of the shows that none of the white kids watched. I did not watch white kid TV like at all. I think I think the one show that I did watch that could even be considered like a white show was Roseanne. Everything else I watched. Like, yeah, dude. Literally, dude. I would watch like two two seven. You know what I mean? Like, oh, dude, I, I would watch all the freaking... I watched all that stuff, too, yeah. Dude, the show with the Reverend, because that was the offshoot from 227. I forget what his name was. Well, that was show. But, dude, I'm watching, like, Different Strokes, freaking, you know, the Jeffersons. Like, dude, I'm watching all that stuff. You weren't the only one. Yeah. Oh, yeah no, no, I'm not saying I was. 
I'm just saying what I grew up on, like that's all I watched. So I only watched Kung Fu. So you weren't checking out Charles in Charge. You were watching. No, I think not until I got older. Like, was it Family Ties? I think when I started watching any of that kind of stuff, it was like reruns already. But like, so I would watch all of the other shows. Like, dude, I was watching them as like, cause like we talked about before, you didn't have you didn't have DVRs and stuff. What about Alf? I was a huge fan of Alf. Uh, I think so. I didn't watch that per se. It was more of the family had it on. So it's just like, all right, cool. I'm gonna watch too. So it's like when I had the chance to actually watch what I wanted to watch. Yeah, I'm watching like Kung Fu or like, uh, you know, the the black shows or the Hispanic shows or definitely not the white people shows. You know, they're watching like parades and crap. And I'm like, nah, we good. No, but I used to like watching uh, Three's Company. I wasn't allowed to. It was too racy. <laughs> oh, I know. Dude, this, really? So I'm not allowed to watch MTV. I'm not supposed to watch like Three's Company. Yet I'm still up at like 2 a.m. being like five and six years old and I'm watching like Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor and shit. Then this, you know, that doesn't really equate. I don't. Well, everybody was asleep, so they couldn't tell me what ah, I could okay. watch. Yeah. yeah, dude, no, that was. That's that's where I learned pretty much all of the bad words. Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. And, uh, and then as I got a little older, George Lopez, uh, I was probably about like seven or eight when I started listening to him too. So, Well, I remember, I remember catching George Carlin like when I was really young because, you know, for my dad, that was like a huge... Cause he was in the, like real big in the 70s is when, I, when he first came out. And then... Um, that's probably when he was starting to get more mainstream. I feel like he was on. He was already, than that. yeah. I think he was. He was already a comedian for some time when he started making it big. But I think it was the seventies when he started booming. Oh, uh, when he started hitting like the mainstream, like doing the light, the late late shows and shit. Well, and getting those huge audiences for some of his his most memorable, you know, bits that he would do. Yeah, I want to say I've seen footage as far back as like late fifties, early sixties, or something on him, maybe. Like I remember quoting, I remember quoting some of his jokes like on the playground in like elementary school, and nobody got them, did they? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "What's existentialism? I don't get that." Oh, it's it's cool, Bob. It's all good. I feel a sneeze coming on. Well, then do it that way. Oh, I hate that. It's the green room. You're not allowed to sneeze in here. That's the one thing you can't do in here. What? Oh, uh, well. I don't know. There's no rules in here. It's the green room. I was confused. I didn't. What happened? Where? It... What happened? I blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> What's high score mean? Is that bad? Did I break it? <laughs> Did I break it? Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Stuff. Shit's weak. Shit's weak. <laughs> Shit's weak. <laughs> Shit's weak. Yeah. Oh. What, do you like you're gonna find something in there? Is that what? No, I was just just reviewing my. I can review my notes. You don't know how to read. Come on, let's Shh. let's be honest. Shh. Shh, just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, pardon my me. My character can read. Oh my god, I can and write. read. I can read. Can read. I feel like that's a person. Ken Reed. Yeah, hi, I'm Ken Reed. How are you? <laughs> hi, I'm Ken. Hi, I'm Tom. No, I'm I'm Ken. Ken Reed. Ken. Ken Reed. I Ken, Ken Reed. Reed. <laughs> it's terrible. These are the it's best horrible. dad jokes ever. No, it's not. No. What? No, you laughed. I laughed. That's two out of two. Democracy wins. That was a funny joke. I was laughing at you, though. I was laughing for you. <laughs> Guess we're even. <laughs> oh, uh, you. But dude, I mean, honestly, like reflecting from from when we first started, like literally the first episode we ever recorded to like right here, right now. I mean, think about the equipment changes, the structure, the overall flow, like we went from these horrible haphazard conversations with really horrible freaking audio 
We're like, dude, I don't even want to listen to the old episodes because well, I'm like, do these things. There's these a lot stuff. of the little things like though, learning the transition and making it smooth and, you know, but I don't know. We're, I don't think we're ever going to perfect that because it's just the, it's the art of conversation. It kind of flows on its own. So it, I, I don't know. It's Because we had, we had that one episode. Oh man. I, I want to say it was, yeah, Green Room Series 2. It, it was like the, oh, maybe the second or third episode. Oh, the one I got in trouble for? Or? No, no, no. Where you and I both came in at the same exact time. We're just like, <laughs> hey. And I was like, yeah, I'll step all over you. <laughs> this is what we're going to do here, apparently. Do I just, and to me, that's very much the epitome of like us staying true to what we're doing. Because as we are trying to make this a serious, you know, deep thing, you know, thought provoking, conversation starting, we very much still have that that hilarity, that levity, you know, we keep ourselves grounded because of that stuff. Well, because, and, you know, for, for us, it's entertaining. I'm just, you know, maybe it's entertaining for someone else. I guess that's the original, it was the original theory that you were trying to push my way. And I was like, dude, nobody's really going to find this all that interesting. You come to find out, people find this very interesting. And it's, and I think it's, again, because we do have that depth, because we do have that honesty and acceptance, because there's plenty of times when you and I greatly agree on stuff and then other times where we're just complete opposites. Like you're stupid. You're a big liar head. You're a big fat dummy. <laughs> but we still, we still accept one another. We still appreciate one another. So there's very much that component. And I think that's really the raw nature of all of what we do, whether it's, you know, in the green room or on, I'm telling you, you know, I meant douchebag in a good way. Like, I mean, douchebags are useful. I mean, <laughs> well, sometimes it is, yeah. And but and then that's that thing though is I I very much feel that that's all of that together is why this works because we are honest, we are accepting, we are appreciative. You can't quantify this. I mean, if we could, it would be a hundred. I mean, the scale might be on a thousand, but it's still a hundred. No, I mean to determine what parts of it do what. I mean, you can't quantify this. I would say you can't just, recreate it. It just is. Dude, you can't flex, bro. No, I'm not trying. To. He's he's over here next to me, trying to like he's like getting this flex vibe. Do he ain't flexing? Flex my bones. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, you need to gain some weight, bro. Add some muscle, something. I'm I'm worried for your health. Oh, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you afraid? Are you are you going to deflect? Is that what you you're not ready to have this conversation? I'm not deflecting. And no, I'm not ready to have this conversation. <laughs> what was that cartoon? Was it cartoon dog? You just sounded like what? Um, Hanna Barbera. Um, yeah, what's his name? Um, With that laugh, you got that like like little wheeze yeah. in your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I can picture him. He's a cat. It's is a it cat. a cat? I think it's a cat, isn't it? Well, cat-like. I don't know. It's freaking what, Hannah Barbera or some I shit. I thought it dude. was a dog. You're a dog. It might be a dog. I don't know. I freaking look it up. I don't know. Oh, dude, come on, so man. We're over. almost there. We're, are we, what do you mean we're almost there? I mean, where are we? We're in the green room. No, we're in the now now. Great. So I'm going to carry a conversation on with myself, apparently. <laughs> He's looking up, uh, I don't know what. You know what? Fine. Fine. Oh. Not oh, that you haven't done that before, you know. Yeah, because I was trying to get you to be more active, and it didn't work. No. I was sad that day. <laughs> Just that day, or? Well, I mean, I've been sad other days, but that was a very specific reason end day that I was or all your sad days my fault as well or sometimes so that sometimes oh, I said are all your bad days my fault 60% of the time <laughs> <laughs> like you pulled it out of my head uh, that's really disturbing why well, does that happen because we spend way too much time together even though I think we don't spend enough time together I miss you it's like <laughs> Uh, like I mean, any, anybody out there have a friend you just know so long you're like psychic with each other like or psycho with each psycho <laughs> with each other <laughs> qu'est-ce que c'est uh, ba 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 run 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 yeah run away run run away oh 
If they, if they're really thinking now, like, why did I click that button? Because they fucking love us. <laughs> Dude, hands down. And now I just keep listening because I want to know if it's going to go anywhere. No, dude, we're the dopest Aha, dope. we tricked you. It's not going anywhere. Yeah, no, hands down, dopest dope I ever smoked. That's what we are. We are the dopest dope you ever smoked. Okay. Yeah. That's how I would classify That's us. what you're going with? Yeah, we're like God's vagina. Wow. I'm not sure if I can stand behind that. That's a little... Dude, it's from freaking Pineapple <laughs> Express. <laughs> no, I get it. Dude, if you remember, you remember that Snowflake Espresso... <laughs> Like if they had a baby and fucked and then those two babies by accident met and fucked and made a baby. Are you going to watch your language, young man? No, I don't. Actually, I'm quoting right now. So it's not me who's saying it. <laughs> it's uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you what it would be like. Earmuffs. <laughs> just saying. Earmuffs. We're not celebrating it here. That's all you got to do. Just earmuffs. You can shit, ball, cock, fuck. Um. Oh, what was my misquote? I was just thinking about that. <laughs> you misquote everything. <laughs> no, because remember I said the wrong uh, Brad. I said the name Brad when I was supposed to. Pulp Fiction. Yes. That's what I got it from because that's like, oh, look at the big brain on Brad. That's one, but that's not yeah. actually the one I was thinking of. The one I was thinking of, was it? Oh, I want to say it was Mystic Pizza. Maybe you'll know the quote if I just say it, but it was like, no Brad, no frosty beverage. Thank you. It was like an intense like moment in the yeah, in the you movie. Didn't, or, you didn't express all of that in your quote. You just used no. Yeah. I used the wrong name because apparently I was thinking of that in the back of my mind for some reason. I, so what you're saying is when we were talking, you said another man's name out loud because you were thinking about him. <laughs> Thanks, I appreciate that. Insert sarcasm here. God, you always take everything so personal. Well, when you're saying, you no, know, I was over there just. <laughs> When you're saying other names of other people while you're on the mic with me, I take it personal. Any other name? Like, yeah, yeah. Like Russell Brand. Well, but that's if you're talking about the person. It's when you actually say it out loud in my direction. <laughs> in your general direction. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh. The gentleman from Georgia has the floor. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just not even touching that. That's what he said. <laughs> but, um, bump. But, um. I got Mr. Chlorophyll over here. I got Mr. Clover here talking about Lord knows what. And all you could think about is making out with me. Mm -hmm. I'm here to learn not to make out with you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, Billy peed his pants. Look, Colonel Sanders over here is... <laughs> <laughs> no, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong. Mama's right. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Something to think about. He's spitting the cuckoo cuckoo cuckoo. <laughs> Did I just catch you trying to hit one of my finely tuned athletic machines? Water sucks. It, it really, really, really sucks. <laughs> Water sucks. <laughs> Gatorade H2O <laughs> Gatorade H2O <laughs> Yeah, dude oh. Water sucks It really, really sucks Water sucks uh, Another movie we have to do Yeah I love my mama very much I love her too I think all of his movies would probably be in that 20 minute or more range or well, whatever we determine that is finally when we start doing that. And, and see, all right. So I was thinking about this a little bit further. If we take the John Hughes productions and if we go through all of them and then take all of them and come up with a comparison of a ratio. So if we take the average of all of the ratios per movie, like each one of those percentages, so if, you know, like Planes, Trains, and Automobile was like 13%, Home Alone's like 12%, you know, 16 Candles like 17%, you know, Weird Science is like 27%. You start taking all those percentages, add them all up and run the average, that's the John Hughes average. Right. So what, could you use that as like a, well, that would a be benchmark? The, well, yeah, that would be the median. So if, you're, if, if you fall below the John Hughes meridian, it's a horrible movie. But if you're within, you know, well, 
So, so yes and no. Well, but no, because so, it's a quotable scale. Well, it's, but we're talking about on the average of percentages. So again, because like we talked about, like I said before, you know, hey, oh, it was just a twelve. Well, but if it was 30, well, but well, but that. if it was a thirty-seven minute movie and twelve minutes of that movie was quotable, bro, like that's a, that's a crazy ratio. You t- yeah. So that's the thing is, so, I think the percentage should be like an after note. That should be like a. I think it's a great idea to have. I like, like just the the sh- straight up minutes, but I don't know. Well, I mean, that's why I think it's like the uh, if we do it as an average off the John Hughes Productions, that gives us the you know the median, the the meridian. Like I said, it. So if you fall below or above the John Hughes meridian, I like that. Then you know that that puts. Do you, you think in that, that would con- constitute like a middle ground for? I think so. Like a quality dialogue movie? Well, because again, we're doing it on the average. So there's going to be a few of them that are going to have like smaller percentages and some that are going to have higher percentages. So when you run them all together as an average, that becomes just like, hey, if you're somewhere in this realm, good movie. If you're well below this line, nah, bro. Nah. But for that, and that's what I was saying, for that scale, like not everything would necessarily fit into like if it's, I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out, like different genres of movies. Wouldn't I mean, like a, I don't know, a love story? Is that really going to be necessarily as quotable, bro? I'm not sitting on the couch watching the love. And that's story the of thing. You. Like this, there's a certain type of movie that we'd be focused on. Yeah, good ones. And it's it's more like a dialogue driven. That's what I would think. More of a dialogue driven or comedy, in a lot of cases. Well, and that's going to give, and I think that if you're only getting into that classification, that's going to distort the whole system. Yeah, because it doesn't yeah. necessarily make it a, well, I don't know. It's just as far as quotables, right? I mean, that's how you're determining if you're a person that goes after that in a movie. You know, quotable moments within a movie, then, you know, that would be what right up we, your alley. That would, oh, it's 20 minutes. That's awesome. I'm checking that out. What if we did it like Wiki, where everybody is allowed to come in and make adjustments? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, what to determine? Well, so, quality content. Well, so we make we make the initial ruling. You know, we base it off our system and our setup, and then we open it up to others to, to kind of come in. Yeah, and just be like, you know. You guys keep putting this one in here, and everybody else is saying no on that. So then maybe we have to remove it, or we, you know, it's we just not one. a memorable line in itself, or something like yeah. Yeah, we're like the whole they world can test it. The whole world thinks like this is the number one quote from the movie, and we're just like, nah, I don't even remember that scene. What was that? And you know that could really that could really screw you up though. If you're looking at like say the the mark you're trying to hit is twenty minutes, and it's like at the mark of twenty minutes and three seconds. And you take that quote out, man, you just lost your 20 minute mark. Maybe. You know, maybe you're down to like 18 and a half minutes now because of that quote they wanted to take out. Then just don't suck. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Be honest. Be, be, you know, be cool. Don't suck. Yeah, oh, get it right the first time. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Get yeah. that shit right. You know that was a shitty line. You should have left it out of your account. You and me saved all these people. <laughs> Definitely. I'm telling you, Weird Science is going to be way up there, man. Mm-hmm. There's just so many freaking good lines out of that movie. Dude, when he's like, when she's like talking in the basement to his parents, and she, he's like, party? What is this party? She's oh, it's nothing crazy. Just a couple of bunch of teens running around in their underwear. <laughs> you know, I'm not talking like chains and whips and candle wax on the nipples. It's just like, what the hell? We're scary. Who's this Gary character you keep going on about? <laughs> do, you, do you know that your son's only enjoyment is tossing off? He was like, you tell me you were combing your hair. I was. I was. <laughs> oh, Gary. <laughs> like, dude, that scene alone is just, you know, it's hilarious. Oh. Well, uh, Gary, uh, dad, I mean, uh, dad, he's he's a plumber. So I, 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 I guess you plumb. <laughs> Like really? <laughs> like, dude, come on, man. Oh, right. How fast yeah, are you going? I'm, oh, about thirty-five. Wait, that's not right. Wait, what are you looking at? I about think, seventy tickets. I would. <laughs> I would think it's probably pretty quotable, but 
you know, you don't know until you try it. We got we we got to stop talking about it and actually do the first one. Dude, come on, man, think about this. What can I get for you? Uh, scotch? Yeah, on the rocks or neat? Yeah, the whole bottle be fine. Tell you what, how about you bend over and I shove the bottle straight up your ass? Yeah, on the rocks is fine. That's what I thought you'd say. Right, dude. Right. Come on, man. There's so many great scenes. Shock full. Yeah, right. <clears throat> do you do you boys have a have a girlfriend? Well, you know, one doesn't really call. Uh, you know, she's she is a sex pot. She's a sex pot, is what she is. <laughs> you really. <laughs> Once you go, not you go ahead and yeah, set us up with two. Wait, make it three. Set yourself up with one too. Yeah, that's such a great scene. There's so many great scenes. I'm not a moron, you know. Hi, nanny. Hi, pappy. Wait, was that my grandparents? <laughs> what are they doing in there? I put them in there. They weren't having much fun at the party. Do they look like they're having fun being canatonic in a closet? They're happy. <laughs> they're not happy. They're catatonic. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, because he's, he's walking around the party hitting people with his Rex Harris and his hat. It's like, you can't do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so many great scenes. Your VCR for oh, starters. Oh, dude, I was just going to say your VCR for starters. Yeah, dude. That's what I'm saying, man. All right, well. He used I, to call it his bitch every night. Every night? On the telephone? On the telephone? What's this guy talking about? about? On the telephone. Explain it to him. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I think we're pretty warmed up. We uh, shot over. The we, hilarity. We overshot the mark. But see, this is the green room where we don't really care about actual timing. No, not so much. No, this is this is because before, dude. This is originally it was once the conversation got serious, it was like, all right, cool. Or if somebody had the now we're gonna click over, yeah, yeah. Somebody had to take a break because we've been drinking too much, and somebody needs to pee. It's just like, all right, cool, we're done. All right, but now it's uh, we can just ease our way out, even though it's past an hour. Yeah, we don't give a shit. So yeah, I mean, absolutely, reach out to us. I know this isn't the the real show. But um, it's it's <gasps> real to me. You. It is, and it's real to me, and it's real to you. Because this but, yeah. is where we stop getting polite and start getting real. So if you wanna, if you wanna drop the line right there, drop it like it's hot. Yeah, do, do you know? Do your thing. Wick a wick a what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fam. Uh, reach out email wise. Uh, I'm telling you at directionsmusic.org. That's I M T E L L I N Y O U at directionsmusic.org. Uh, otherwise, I mean, because you're probably on um, one of the other platforms that we run, so it's probably like a comment section or you know something. Just dude, just drop us a line, write something down, reach out to us. We want the interaction. We want people to come out. Do we? You fuck. You, dude, <laughs> we we've had live guests uh, or live audiences. Uh, we want to get some guests on. We want to do a bunch of other stuff. So I mean, you know, we're always looking to continue the conversation as well as make sure that we're having everyone else be a part of it. Because otherwise, it's just me talking to this dude. And this gets old. It's really annoying. Just, dude, you really are. And now he doesn't want to look at me in the face. Apparently, now I haven't wanted for a while. All right, I think that's a good place to sign off. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go. Uh, we're gonna call a marriage counselor. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna talk this out before we get back on for I'm telling you. <laughs> but yeah, um, as always, uh, Philly D, Mr. Gemini. Yeah, uh, be good to yourself. Be good to everyone else. Peace. Peace.